first of all, thank you, Venkat, for the very kind introduction. And good afternoon for everyone in the UK. If you happen to be in the United States, good morning. Um, so uh, I want to start by thanking the organizers, uh, Venkat, Christoph, and Kelly, for inviting me to the Leonard Jones Center discussion group and for giving me this opportunity to share our research here. Um, as Venkat just said, I, sorry, oh, I, I work at Rutgers University, which is the State University of New Jersey. Uh, we're on the East Coast of the United States, and it's a, a very convenient location. We're close to Princeton University, which is also uh, in New Jersey, uh, UPenn, which is in Philadelphia, uh, and Columbia and NYU, which are both in New York City. So if you get to visit the East Coast of the United States, you're welcome to visit us too. Um, our I belong to the uh, Department of Chemistry and Chemical Biology. We, we just opened up a new research building. But my office is another is in another building uh, across the campus. Uh, the building is called Center for Integrative Proteomics Research. It has the name proteomics in it because uh, it hosts the headquarters of the Protein Data Bank you know, the database for uh, biological structures. Uh, we have an interesting sculpture in front of the building. Uh, if you, you know, read it carefully, it is actually collagen, which is a um, triple helix structure. All right, so my group uh, uses computational, uh, theoretical and computational tools to study the structure, dynamics, and spectroscopy of condensed phase systems. In particular, we focus on three directions. Uh, we are elucidating the quantum nature of hydrogen bonds in proteins. Uh, we're also developing theoretical strategy to model the linear and multidimensional vibrational spectroscopy of nucleic acids. In addition, we're examining the absorptive and optical properties of nanomaterials. So today I'm going to talk to you about the first direction on the structure and quantum effects of short hydrogen bonds in proteins. For this audience, I don't have to uh, emphasize how important hydrogen bond is in chemistry and biology. So I'll just give you a few examples. Hydrogen bonds give water many anomalous properties and make it the Earth's most important liquid. They hold proteins in their functional three-dimensional structures and directly participate in enzyme catalysis. The structure, dynamics, and energetics of a hydrogen bond depend strongly on its donor and acceptor heavy atom distance, R. While typical hydrogen bonds have R between 2.8 and 3.2 angstrom, short hydrogen bonds with R below 2.7 angstrom occur extensively in organic molecules and biological macromolecules. For example, we have recently conducted a statistical analysis of the protein data bank, which contain over 200,000 structures of biological macromolecules and search for these short hydrogen bonds. Uh, cons considering that their properties are highly dependent on R, we've only focused on structures that are refined with X-ray or neutron scattering experiments and have resolution better than 1.1 inch. Such a criterion allows us to choose the top 1% highest quality structures in the database and ensures that the arrow in R is within 0.1 instrument. This search gives 1663 biomolecules and 1504 of them contain at least one short hydrogen bond. We found a total of around 16,000 short hydrogen bonds, which give an average of 11 per structure and highlights their prevalence in proteins, protein ligand complexes, and nucleic acids. To indicate their biological functions, we find that short hydrogen bonds are particularly enriched in enzymes. For example, we found about 12,000 short hydrogen bonds in 900 enzymes, which span all seven classes of enzymes. As shown here, they're most abundant in hydrolases, followed by oxidoreductases. As an example, the enzyme aminoglycoside uh, N3-acetyltransferase contains such a short hydrogen bond in its active site, linking the catalytic residue histine-189 and glutamate-192. The NO distance here is 2.57 angstrom, and nucleoquant... Uh, neutron scattering uh, experiments have shown that the proton is shared in this hydrogen bond with the distance of 1.2 angstrom from the donor atom and 1.4 angstrom from the acceptor atom. This short hydrogen bond is proposed to alter how these catalytic histine residue interact with the ligand, which is an antibiotic drug. 
So it mediates the antibiotic resistance of this bacteria. We got interested in the biological functions of short hydrogen bonds, but we want to start with this PDB search to get some of their general um, properties. So structurally, we find that, that the backbone of protein uh, often acts as the donor or acceptor of short hydrogen bonds, and they can exist in all kinds of secondary structures. 40% of them are in regular secondary structures, such as alpha helices and beta sheets. And this is particularly the case when both the donor and acceptor groups are in the protein backbone. In the case of backbone side chain hydrogen bonds, the backbone residues are more likely to be in disorder regions, such as coils and turns. So proteins can not only use regular secondary structures to bring residues together, but also take advantage of the structural flexibility to form these very close contacts. Chemically, uh, among the 20 common amino acids, 11 have polar side chains and it can, they can form uh, hydrogen bonds. So we've plotted their occurrence here and found three types of amino acids that are particularly interesting. The first type involved negatively charged aspartate and glutamate. Um, they have this carboxylate side chain and serve as acceptor in over 80% of biological short hydrogen bonds. In contrast, the most common donors are the neutral residues, serine, threonine, and tyrosine, which contain either alkyl or aromatic side chains uh, with hydroxyl groups. In addition, the positively charged lysine, histine, and arginine are also common donors. So charge might be an important factor here. So we've plotted the um, distribution of charged versus neutral short hydrogen bonds. As shown here, while both types are abundant, the charged ones dominate when R is between 2.35 and 2.65 angstrom. Now, short hydrogen bonds are ubiquitous in proteins, but they're actually quite challenging to identify because one really needs a protein structure to be at atomic resolution to precisely locate these oxygen and nitrogen atoms. And this is very challenging for structure determination methods, such as X-ray diffraction, NMR, and cryo, um, cryo EM single particle analysis. Um, so using these uh, atomic resolution structures in the PDB, and the structural, chemical, and sequence information we uh, collected from them, we collaborate with our colleagues in the statistics department to develop a machine learning model um, for the prediction of short hydrogen bonds between amino acids. We have further designed a web server for this machine learning model, uh, which is hosted on my group website. So here a user can upload a protein structure to, with low to moderate resolution and get the probability that each hydrogen bond is a short hydrogen bond. So we hope that these predictions will provide additional restraints for the protein structure refinement. In addition, the machine learning model allows us to uh, assign an important score to the 21 input parameters. And interestingly, the type of the donor residue play a major role here because it contributes to 28% of the prediction. The other factors such as the type of the acceptor residue and the um, uh, sequence information are, are all important here. And following the same strategy, we have also designed a machine learning model for protein ligand short hydrogen bonds. Um, and here, the type of the amino acids and the type of ligand functional group are the major players. Uh, and the sequence information is, again, important. So we think these are more relevant to the protein functions uh, because many of these short hydrogen bonds occur in the active site of proteins, and many of the ligands are drug molecules, heme, NADP, uh, which have uh, important biological functions. All right, so um, due to the short distance of these short hydrogen bonds, they actually have uh, prominent covalent characters. However, the quantum nature and biological functions of short hydrogen bonds are not well understood. This is mainly because experimentally, it is very difficult to probe a specific proton in a very large biomolecule. But that's not the end of the story because researchers have cleverly designed a series of small molecules to mimic these biological short hydrogen bonds. For example, they've looked at the molecule CUA and DH and D to mimic the NHO and OHO type short hydrogen bonds in the active site of enzymes. Now with these small molecules, um, researchers can start doing neutron scattering, IR, and NMR experiments to get their general trends. 
For example, they find that when R shortens, the donor hydrogen bond lengthens significantly and can go up to 1.25 angstrom. Accordingly, the uh, donor hydrogen uh, stretch frequency would decrease from their regular values of 3,500 wave numbers to below 1,000 wave numbers. One of the most characteristic features of short hydrogen bonds is their highly downfield proton NMR chemical shifts. Typically, a hydrogen containing functional group uh, has a chemical shift between 1 and 10 ppm. However, as shown here, when R shortens, these chemical shifts can increase steadily uh, and can go up to 23 ppm for short hydrogen bonds. In the meantime, one would observe large isope effects when hydrogen is replaced by deuterium, indicating the importance of the nuclear quantum effects. So we got interested in these downfield proton chemical shifts. We want to understand where they come from and how they're related to the structure of short hydrogen bonds. To answer these questions, we have uh, analyzed a set of model compounds in the, um, different solvation conditions. These include DMNH, HM, DHND, and CUA, which cover the NHN, OHO, and NHO type um, hydrogen bonds. And because they all have constrained geometry, these hydrogen bonds are held around 2.5 inch. So with these um, model molecules, we're going to perform up initial molecular dynamics or AIMD simulations to elucidate their electronic quantum um, effects. Um, some of you are experts in AIMD, but others are maybe more familiar with the classical MD simulation, uh, where the particles evolve under a Hamiltonian that contains a kinetic energy part and a potential energy part. So in a classical MD, the potential energy will come from a force field. And in AIMD simulations, the potential energy will come from on-the-fly electronic structure calculations. Um, so compared to a classical MD simulation, these AIMD simulations explicitly include um, electronic many-body effects and allow chemical bonds to form and break. Now, AIMD simulations explicitly include electronic quantum effects, but they still treat the nuclei classically. And nuclear quantum effects can be incorporated effectively using the path angle formalism. Here, the Hamiltonian is a slightly uh, a little bit more um, complex. But if we take a closer look, the first two terms are the kinetic energy and potential energy of a system composed of multiple copies of the same particle. And the last term here can be viewed as harmonic springs connecting neighboring beats, forming a ring polymer. So if performs AIMD, and up initial path integral molecular dynamics or AIPIMD simulations of these model compounds in organic solvents and aqueous solutions. The uh, simulation details are shown here. So what can we get from these simulations? Uh, shown here is the movie we made from the AIMD simulations of DMANH in acetyl nitrile. Here we see that the hydrogen bonded proton jumps back and forth between the donor and acceptor nitrogen atoms. To characterize its position, we've defined this uh, proton sharing coordinate nu as the difference between the donor hydrogen length and the acceptor hydrogen length. And then we plot the free energy of this system uh, along two coordinates. One is the length of the hydrogen bond R, and the other is the proton position nu. So from the AIMD simulations, we see a double well potential where the minima are at 2.6 angstrom and nu of plus and minus uh, 0.5 angstrom. So these two minima correspond to when the protons close closer to the donor or acceptor nitrogen atoms. What about in AIPIMD simulations? Here, the orange spheres are the ring polymer beads of the hydrogen bonded proton. As each ring polymer bead is equivalent, uh, the spread of it really represents the position uncertainty of the proton. So just by looking at this movie, we can see that the proton can be simultaneously bonded to both the donor and acceptor nitrogen atoms. This is also reflected in the 2D Ferengi surface. Inclusion of nuclear quantum effects wash out that double well character. And now there's a single minimum at R of 2.6 angstrom and nu of zero. And this corresponds to when the proton is in the middle of this hydrogen bond. And from these first principle simulations, we've uh, extracted a thousand solute solvent uh, config configurations clusters and calculated their uh, proton chemical shifts using the uh, gauge independent atomic orbital approach. 
And then shown here are the average chemical shifts from AIMD and AIPIMD simulations, which are in good agreement with the experimental um, observations. In addition to getting these average proton chemical shifts, we can also look at these instantaneous ones um, at each step of the simulations. Here we collect all of the instantaneous proton chemical shifts. Surprisingly, while all of the model systems have different donor and acceptor groups and are in different solvents, their proton chemical shifts um, all follow the same trends with the proton position new. We then use a quadratic function to describe this relation. And then we can assume that nu uh, follow a Gaussian distribution. So we can also derive um, how a, uh, an average proton chemical shift is related to the average proton position, nu zero. Nu zero here can also be recognized as the equilibrium proton position, which one can obtain from say a DFT geometry optimization or a neutron scattering experiment. So to validate this relation, we found a series of organic and inorganic small molecules in the literature whose structures and chemical shifts are both known from experiments. So then we use the experimental NMR chemical shifts um, to predict where the proton is. And the predicted values are in excellent agreements with the experimental values uh, really validating this, uh, this equation. Now, given this strong correlation, we believe this relation to, will hold not only for small molecules, but for uh, biological macromolecules. So it effectively bridges um, these um, you know, NMR experiments and the position of the proton in these short hydrogen bonds. All right, since I only have 20 minutes, I want to quickly wrap up. Um, so we've done a, a statistical analysis of the protein data bank and shown that short hydrogen bonds are ubiquitous in biological macromolecules. And then we look at a bunch of uh, model systems to show that they have considerable electronic and nuclear quantum effects, which reflects as uh, very downfield proton NMR chemical shifts. So if there's any take home message from this um, talk, it will be that short hydrogen bonds are really uh, ubiquitous in biological systems. And next time we see them, we should not treat them as electrostatic interactions, uh, but rather with, um, you know, in include their uh, quantum nature. With that, I wanna thank the people who actually did the work. Um, I have a group of excellent graduate students, and the work I present today is done by Sheng Ming, who recently graduated from our group. Um, I want to thank professors Stephen Burley and Helen Berman, who are the current and former directors of the uh, PDB, for their support and very helpful discussions. I also want to thank our collaborator, uh, Professor Sitian Wang and his students, Yuan Hao, for uh, developing the machine learning model. Um, these are the funding sources that have supported us, and thank you all for your attention. I'll be happy to take any questions.